Karl Popper's first volume of The Open Society and Its Enemies, which was published in 1945, is a thorough critique of Plato's totalitarian and historicist tendencies in the light of the events of and before the Second World War. In the complete works of the Open Society, Karl Popper advocates for democracy, self-determination, universal Kantian ethics, and a critical empirical science in opposition to what he calls oracular philosophy, of which Plato marks its genesis. According to Popper, Plato's philosophy is based on pessimistic historicism. This means that the current state of society is degenerated. It used to be ideal and complete, but has departed from its initial form. This thought is based on Plato's theory of forms, which assumes that to every material thing there is an ideal form from which it derived. Yet material existence is prone to degenerate, hence fading from its former completeness. The only way how to stop the decline of society is to strive for the perpetuation of it. This means installing a caste state. Plato distinguishes three classes in his best state, the guardians, their armed auxiliaries or warriors, and the working class. On top of this system is the philosopher king, who is the wisest and leader to his people, with the mission to return the state to its ideal form, pre-degeneration. Now, it does not take much imagination to understand where Popper is going with this argument, labeling Plato as a proto-fascist and precursor to the ideological monstrosities of the 20th century of which the European fascists, as also the Soviet Marxists, believed in historical progress, an ideal state, and a leader who will guide them there. Popper seems to have found the seeds of these ideas in the philosophy of Plato, especially in his work The State or Politeia, a political program seems apparent. The idealist formula is arrest all political change. Change is evil. Rest is divine. All change can be arrested if the state is made an exact copy of its original, of the form or idea of the city. Should it be asked how this is practicable, we can reply with the naturalistic formula back to nature, back to the original state of our forefathers, the primitive state, founded in accordance with human nature and therefore stable. Back to the tribal patriarchy of the time before the fall, to the natural class rule of the wise few over the ignorant many. He then assigns five points within the political program. Number one, the strict division of the classes. Number two, the identification of the fate of the state with that of the ruling class. Number three, the ruling class has a monopoly of things like military virtues and training and of the right to carry arms and to receive education of any kind. Number four, there must be censorship of all intellectual activities of the ruling class and a continual propaganda aiming at molding and unifying their minds. Five, the state must be self-sufficient. It must aim at economic autarky. This can be easily used as a template which can be applied to totalitarian regimes. Taking the obvious, so Nazi Germany, number one, we have a strict division of races, here instead of classes, number two, the German fate of the Versailles Treaty and the Lebensraum Osten theory, number three, the state controlled military and enforced un uh, unifying culture, Number four, the censorship of the press and the repression of a free mind. And number five, the state tried to emancipate from trade through conquering and enslaving its neighbors. And this political program had been written over two millennia earlier. Popper argues that this totalitarian utopia of Plato was his personal reaction towards the uncertainty of his times. Plato lived in a period of wars and political strife. While he grew up, 
The breakdown of the tribal life of the Greeks had led in Athens, his native city, to a period of tyranny, and later to the establishment of a democracy which tried jealously to guard itself against any attempts to reintroduce either a tyranny or an oligarchy, a rule of the leading aristocratic families. So, according to Popper's conclusion, especially the later works of Plato contain a longing for stability which mirror the political situation in which he found himself, his politeia being hence a political solution for a return to the golden days. To sum up, the open society and its enemies, Plato's spell, is for its time published a radical turn against Plato, an attempt to reason on the origins of totalitarianism with Plato's popular elitist ideas as the root of all evil. And to end with the end of the book itself, for those who have eaten of the tree of knowledge, paradise is lost. The more we try to return to the heroic age of tribalism, the more surely do we arrive at the Inquisition, at the secret police, and at a romanticized gangsterism. Beginning with the suppression of reason and truth, we must end with the most brutal and violent destruction of all that is human. There is no return to a harmonious state of nature. If we turn back, then we must go the whole way. We must return to the beasts.